What is up everyone? Welcome to Networking Video Part 6. I'm going to start with a quick apology. Um, two weeks ago when I uploaded Part 5, I promised you guys that Part 6 would be out the next week, um, which was last week. But as you guys know, I bought a Synology rack station and made a massive video about that. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. But I did make another change. I'm just going to use this handy box to sit on here to show you guys. Um, as you can see, I did change all of my patch cables and I did put a brush panel in between the switch and the patch panel. That has made things a lot better. The door will now close, but I wouldn't dream of closing the door. Whoops, I forgot about that guy. <laughs> wouldn't dream of closing the door in this weather without any cooling in the cabinet because it is really, really humid outside. Um, the cables are a little bit messy, but I can clear them up. I just did it really, really quickly, so don't worry about that. It will look neater in the future. I am considering getting another brush panel and going into one and out of the other, because when I move the modem, I'll be able to shift all of this stuff up. But we're not going to really be making any rack changes in this video. Rack changes will come in part seven. Um, we'll be ditching a lot of this unused equipment and really tidying things up putting cooling into the rack, um, just generally sorting the whole thing. But this video, we are continuing what we started in part five, and that is, of course, sorting out the cupboard under the stairs patch panel and all of the stuff to go with it. So um, it's a bit messy in here at the moment. Someone actually commented on part five saying, when the heck are you going to tidy your office? It's a complete hole. And I, I was just like, man, this is, this is an ongoing thing. There are like 10 ongoing projects in here. This is crazy, you know. Anyway, the most important thing, I got my trunking as you guys can see now it's a little bit bigger than i thought it was going to be um i obviously did look at the measurements and kind of try and imagine how big it would be and it is fairly chunky um so it's gonna look something like that it's not too big at all it's good because it leaves room for future expansion um so i've got a load of trunking which we needed and that's where we're going to start actually we're just going to start doing the network drops in this video i could faff around in the cupboard some more and do some more little jobs but i'm just going to drop all of the cabling down um i do have some stuff to go with the trunking i've got these little couplers to make the joins much easier so they just clip on top and hide um, if you've done a nasty little cut or something, you know, a little bit jaggedy, it just covers all of that up. Same goes for the corners. I've got two corners because um, we're going to be dropping one corner outside and one corner in here. Um, so that's that. I also purchased a new switch. Now this is, I'm going to turn the fan off because I don't want any noise because I'm going to explain this and it's going to be important. A couple of people asked me why on earth was I bothering running multiple network lines down to the cupboard, patching it all in, why didn't I just put a switch in the cupboard under the stairs? That's a very good question and I'm going to answer it right now. This switch is going behind the TV. This is an eight port switch. I used to have one of these but um, I gave it to work. We're now using it in work to distribute data to the card machines. Uh, so I've bought another one. They're cheap as chips anyway. Um, this is just a basic 8 port unmanaged switch, TP link. This is going behind the TV and the reason I didn't want to put a switch in the cupboard under the stairs is because then that would have made um, three switches in a daisy chain and no, that's just not good enough. The whole point of this project is to make the network better, uh, not just add crap on top of other crap. So the reason there's a switch going behind the TV is because I can only at the moment see a feasible way to run one network line behind there. Maybe in the future I'll be able to run more, but at the moment I've got four devices that use Ethernet on the TV setup. So I can't run four network lines, so I need a switch. Pretty simple. I don't mind daisy, daisy chaining two switches, I'm okay with that. A smaller switch off the main switch, I'm happy. But three switches in a row, it seems a little bit excessive, especially if I'm running one line down or two, because I'd need to run two anyway. Um, one for the, um, obviously the internet coming in, and one to run a feed to the switch anyway. So if I'm running two, I may as, well, may as well run four, and then that eliminates the need for a switch. So hopefully that answers your questions as to why I didn't just bung a switch in the cupboard under the stairs. Also, a couple of people brought up a really good question. Why isn't the rack itself in the cupboard under the stairs? Well, there are a couple of reasons for this. Firstly, the rack won't go through the cupboard door. So that is basically the, the, the first hurdle. You're not going to get around that. The rack doesn't come apart. It doesn't fit through the door. But let's say if it did, there are multiple reasons why it's a bad idea to put it under there. 
Firstly, I'm running four lines down now, uh, blah, 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 running four lines down now to the cupboard. I'd need to run more than four lines up to the office from the cupboard. So it's handy having the network rack in here because this is where I have the most devices connected with Ethernet and more devices in the future. So I've got all of the ports I want at my disposal here. Also, a couple of other reasons, it is very dusty in the cupboard under the stairs. You saw the state of the walls. I'd be constantly, constantly hoovering out the rack, hoovering out the equipment. It would probably um, shorten the lifespan of any equipment I put in the rack. I just wouldn't be able to prevent the dust from getting in there. Um, you can see the big hole in the uh, ceiling and all the crumbly walls. That's why it's so dusty under there. And of course, once you put a big rack in the cupboard under the, under the stairs, you can't really use the cupboard for anything because uh, the big rack is in the way. So where's your hoover going to go, where's all that stuff going to go, so yeah, it's just, it made a lot more sense to do it this way, plus it won't go through the door, so hopefully that's cleared up a few little questions, I'll answer some more questions from the comments as the video goes on, but I didn't tell you guys, so it was, they were completely valid questions, because I didn't inform you guys that I'd be putting a switch behind the TV in part five, so now you know I'm doing that, then you know, you probably understand that daisy chaining three switches is a little excessive, especially when I need to run two lines down there minimum anyway, so I may as well run four. And due to the size of this trunking, I can run more in the future if I like, um, but there's no real benefit to me running any more at the moment. I don't have anything else to run to. Um, I would love to run more than one network drop to the TV, but then you create a little bit of a conflict, because if I run two to the TV, maybe I could get away with running two, that would be completely fine. I'd still need a switch because I've got more than two devices. So one gets its own dedicated drop and then the other ones are running off a switch. It doesn't really make much sense. If I'm going to put more than one, I may as well take six back there. And there's no feasible way for me to take six. So, you know, it's just all, all these things. It's like a balancing act. You've got to kind of figure out where you need it, how you need it. Yeah, it's just all, it's a process. It's a process. So while my drill is charging up, I've got a couple of things that I can be getting on with. Firstly, I need to clear some space. So I need to move the door and I need to move some other stuff. In case you're wondering, a couple of people asked me about the door. That's Eli's bedroom door. Um, unfortunately, he had a little bit of a door related accident and it is now no longer on its hinges. Um, so that needs a coat to looking at. Also, of course, I need to move the stuff that's on the landing so that I can pull the carpet back and pull the floor up but that will be a little further down the line anyway, probably in about an hour's time. Um, I've got a nice slot of time to do this this morning. It's just coming up to quarter to ten now. I've been rambling for ages. Um, so I've got a couple of hours that I can dedicate to this. What I'm going to do as well is I'm going to measure out the cabling and I'm hopefully going to measure out an approximate length of cabling that I'll need and I'll do it four times, pre-cut it and then run it down that way. I won't leave myself short. If anything, I'll leave myself way, way too much. That way the cable won't go to waste. I can use it for something else in the future and I will have enough. And I think that'll be the easiest and quickest way for me to run it so I can make a little um, time altogether at one end, poke them through, job done. That is the first step complete. As you guys can see, it looks pretty damn clean. Um, I'm gonna have a shelf here as well. So it'll kind of break up the wall a little bit and just, I think blend in. It is fairly big, but it matches the um, matches the look of the room. So it's not screwed down yet. It's just um, just using the adhesive, and I did have to unpeel it and peel it, um, stick it on a couple of times. So it's not quite sitting really, really flush against the wall. Um, so I'll screw it down. But I've measured, and it is as straight as I can get it as straight as I can get it. It's eight and a quarter at that end and just over eight and a quarter this end so it it works out okay. Um, I got a corner piece here. If I can stand on this rack without falling over, I am going to move this TV because it is in the way. Okay, hopefully I don't fall. Um, this corner piece will be going here so as you guys can see I just need a tiny, tiny, tiny bit to bridge that gap and then I'll have a nice corner going down. Um, so I need to cut it and I need a saw. I'm just kind of lacking in tools. So I've pulled out four cables and cut them to length and I've basically created one solid chunk of cable at one end to push through the floor. That's why I've taped up so much of it, just so it's a solid piece that I can cram under the floor because I don't have any rods or anything useful. Um, 
I've cut off all of that length, so that's the four runs, um, just in a heap over there. The trunking is secured to the wall. Um, that went without a hitch. I added one little extra small screw this end, just because I'd unpeeled the adhesive a couple of times. It was a little bit flappy on the end, so I thought I'd give it some extra security. Um, probably doesn't need all five screws in each one, but you know it's not going anywhere now, which is nice. I've begun drilling the hole through the wall. Unfortunately, of course, because it's right at the edge, I'm drilling through a, st a stud, which is taking forever, and my drill is now flat. It's only a little cheapo little drill. Um, unfortunately, my really good hammer drill is uh, the battery has given up the ghost and it just does not charge. So I've made a decent start with the hole, um, both ends, but I haven't met in the middle yet <laughs> and just keep getting stuck. I've been working my way up um, drill bit sizes. I've made some progress. This bit of trunking is secured to the wall with the adhesive and this bit of trunking is not, it's just there. But as you guys can see, this was made to measure, it really was. I haven't trimmed either of these pieces and you can see it is just the right size. I can get my finger under there, which will be enough for the cabling to duck backwards a little to go under the floor. Um, I won't even have to trim the carpet probably. I'll just trim down this little bit of skirting so that it can sit up next to it. And as you can see, that'll look quite tidy when it's all back. So. I'm really pleased with that and it'll be even tidier because this cable is pushing the carpet up at the moment so it'll sit even flatter which is really nice and then at the top I managed to with my hacksaw the only saw I own I managed to cut off um, a little bit of the corner piece and then a little more when it wasn't quite enough and fortunately cut off a tiny tiny shade too much as you can see there is a little gap let me get up on the chair to show you guys closer um, where is the chair? Oh, there it is, right in front of me. So as you guys can see, there's a tiny line there, but that is nothing. And of course, we're up on a chair looking at it. When you're down here, you just won't see it. You really won't. So I am very pleased with that. Um, and then of course, the other side, we have got the rest. So um, I'm not gonna secure the bottom bit. That was just there for sort of, measurement purposes. Um, I'll wait until I drill through the floor, otherwise the conduit will get in the way of the drill. It's going to be tight enough there uh, as it is with the door frame. But I'm really pleased with this. It blends right into the door frame. It just looks like part of the door frame. Um, that's very, very discreet in my opinion. So really good. Like a flipping glove, folks. First try on the cut. And the awesome thing is you can really easily hide your knobbly end, as you can see. You know, it's not a bad cut but it's certainly not something you'd want in view. That's where these ends, sorry about this filming folks, it's hard when you're standing in the corner. That's where these ends really come in handy. Give me a sec, put it back the way it was. Just ruined it all. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm gonna stick it down as well. Bang, there you go, focus. There we go, that's more like it. Check that out folks. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna stick a a drop on the wall. So I pulled the drill off charge for just a second to uh, use some of its juice to finish this hole. And you may or may not be able to see, but actually it'll be easier from the other side because it's much lighter in here. Hopefully I can get this for you guys on camera. There you go. There is one hole straight through the wall. All I've got to do now is wait for it to charge a bit more so that I can widen the center of the hole and then we will be laughing. What it is is these big bits I've got aren't long enough so I've had to use these masonry bits to get all the way through the middle which are extremely difficult on the wood um, so just like everything I do I haven't got the correct equipment but you know we're getting by. Okay, so let's have a little time check. It has been several hours since I've given you guys an update. Don't worry, you haven't missed crazy amounts. Basically, we went shopping in the middle of the day and this happened and that happened and I cooked dinner and we had lunch and all this, that and the other. Between everything, I did about um, an hour and a half this morning and about an hour this evening. And the result is completed trunking, apart from the bottom two ends. So we've got one more meter of trunking to go under there and one more over there. But as you can see, our four network drops are run through the trunking. So here's the slack for the cupboard under the stairs. 
and here's the slack for the office and as you can see it's coming out of the trunking and it looks pretty damn good even if I do say so myself unfortunately I've got a little bit of a headache coming on so I'm gonna take some tablets in a minute and have a chill out this evening I'm not gonna do any more I was gonna get cracking on editing this video this evening but I'll resume everything tomorrow the only slight little downside is um, as you can see I nicked the wall the wallpaper um, outside of the truss uh, the truss <laughs> the trunking um, boundary Gosh, you can tell what I normally do. <laughs> um, and this side, the same thing, ever so slightly outside of the trunking boundary. That's just tiny, just a couple of mil. Um, so a bit of, bit of filler will sort that side. Not a great deal can be done about this side. But to be perfectly honest, folks, this is the least of our worries because we have things like this. Um, yeah, toddlers and wallpaper, not a good idea. So we're going to be decorating the... Uh, landing and stairs and hallway in one big go. I'm hoping to do it this year, this summer sometime. Um, I'd love to just get it done. I'd love to just go for it. Um, but we'll see how that goes. Anyway, back to the matter that we are actually discussing. This has turned out incredibly well. Um, we are now ready to pull up the floor first thing tomorrow. I think that's the more exciting thing to do. We could terminate these ends and stick them in the rack because that's going to take quite a while. Getting a tidy loom all raveled at the back and feeding it in, pulling the rack out so that I can fit that last little bit of trunking. That's going to be probably about an hour's job, um, maybe even a couple of hours, just getting that sorted. So I think the more exciting thing to do tomorrow morning, first of all, would be to rip up the floor, send all of this cabling downstairs, and then punch these cables into the socket down there. Um, then we'll hang a tester out with them, and every time we crimp a connector, we'll be able to see if we have got continuity. And I hope to God that we have, because it was not easy running these cables and I'm not even done yet. Um, I will say one thing, it took me a lot longer than I thought it would to drill that hole. That hole was a bit of a nightmare obviously because um, it wasn't just plasterboard I was going through. Much, much more solid over there. Um, it's right by the edge of the wall so I should have known that. But I got through it um, with a variety of different drill bits in the end. Uh, I think I showed you that earlier anyway but everything's just a little bit everywhere at the moment. One last thing that I'd like to just mention quickly is in the last clip I hadn't screwed down all of the trunking. Um, every single screw hole in every piece of the trunking including this drop and the drop here they're all screwed in so they're absolutely solid. Um, you can swing off them and they're not going anywhere so that is also done. I wasn't going to screw after running the cables. Um, I ran the hoover along all of the trunking as well because there was little mounds of dust everywhere where I screwed so it's just it, it's all it's all doing what it should do and uh, the plan is coming together. Right then I'm just going to stop repeating myself and I'll catch you guys tomorrow morning for the uh, for the exciting part wrenching up the floor and dropping these guys down. It is the next day. It's about four o'clock. I haven't been doing any of this today. I've been doing all sorts of other things. Um, but something I did yesterday quickly, when I had five minutes after recording um, the bits of the video you guys saw, I drilled the hole in the floor and I attached the bottom piece of trunking. So it looks fantastic. Um, and right now we're just going to go for it. We're going to rip up the carpet. We're going to feed the cables through and just that is going to be such a big step out of the way. So I've, I've put the cupboard under the stairs light on so we can see to feed the cables through. Let's do it. Check this out, folks. We have got the trunking completely done. The lid popped on. Um, needs a tiny bit more along this side. There we go. Uh, cables have gone down. You can just about see them there. And then they come out here which is fantastic. There's all the slack, and here is our new end to push through. I had to ditch the old end um, because I got a tangle and it was all taped, but this end saw us through the wall anyway, so I would have obviously chopped it off um, because I wouldn't trust that end for damage. Um, so now we are going down into where that light is just shining through. And this is not going to be easy, but once it's through, 
it's through. So the cables are run, as you can see, very clean. They just come round, they're here, they go under there, under that bit of plastic piping, and you can just about see the light down there into the cupboard. That was much easier than I thought it was gonna be, way less painless, so I am super pleased with that. I'm gonna put the floor back because we are done under here. We are completely done, and if all goes to plan, we won't have to pop this open again for a very long time. Unless I add more network feeds or do something, but I think four will be quite enough. <laughs> it is Sunday evening and I am sitting here. I've just caught up with the editing of this video. We've got a decent chunk done this weekend. I was really hoping to come back this evening. I've been out with the family today, absolutely lovely day. I was really hoping to come back this evening and terminate the connectors on the four runs at the rack end and also punch them down in the cupboard end, but I am I am in no no shape to do it at all. I am tired. The hay fever has been crazy today. My eyes are streaming, nose is running, sneezing, the works. Um, are just absolutely bonkers. So all I want to do now is cook dinner, eat dinner, um, put the kids to bed and relax. So I'm not going to do any networking stuff. I think I would really, really struggle to do a good job um, uh, this evening. So definitely slower progress uh, this weekend than it was the first weekend that I did this with part five. But that's okay uh, because now that we've run the lines, we've got significant progress. Uh, we're well over halfway now, well over halfway with this project. We've still got two major line runs to do, the one to the TV and the one to the modem but that's fine, that'll come in the future. Um, in this video, a little bit in the future, you know, it's not gonna be one of those things where it's delayed for three years, I promise. Um, but let me just show you guys, I've put the carpet in the floor back and everything, so that's some progress. And what I'm gonna try and do is something that's slowing down my workflow now is the fact that I'm kind of working on so many different things in here at the moment that every time I go to find something, I can't find it or whatever. So I need to tidy all of this up before I continue working on the network stuff. So I'll try and get that done in the week and then next weekend, hopefully we can just blitz some networking. But as you can see, all of the carpet is back and this is really, really clean. All we've got to do is trim down the skirting and put the skirting back. I mean, it doesn't really matter. The skirting in the whole house is really crap. Um, but you know, just at least something is sitting there where is it anyway? It's around here somewhere. Uh, just as a demonstration, here it is. So it's just gonna look a little bit like that. So as you guys can see, pretty nice, just without that end bit. So it's looking good. Uh, that'll be clean, really clean. So here we are on my desk. We've got RJ45 connectors in this box here, choice of green and blue. Uh, we've got my crimping tool, some other bits and bobs, apologies for the mess, and <laughs> I'm trying to keep a straight face, but believe it or not folks, there has been five months between the last clip that you just finished watching, where I was on the landing talking about the skirting board, yes I have watched it back because I couldn't remember where the heck I was, there's been five months between then and now. I've done some cool stuff off camera. While I've had five minutes over the last couple of months, I've finished off a few cool little things in the cupboard under the stairs. They weren't worth pulling the camera out for, so what I'm gonna do now is terminate these connectors, and then this evening, I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I've done in the cupboard, because the exciting part is, as soon as I get all RJ45s on the end, and I plug these guys into the rack, we can move on, and we can actually start, we can, we can pretty much, yeah, everything we did in the cupboard, we can power it up and make it live. We can move the Hue bridge, we can move the router, and that gives us great progress. All we have left, and by the way, the, the original plan in the earlier part of the video, or the previous part, part five, the earlier plan still stands. Everything that I was gonna do, I'm still gonna do. Even though a lot of time has passed, I have not come up with a better plan, this is the plan that I'm sticking with. So, let's put some ends on these cables. All right, guys. I have terminated all four cables and I've tested one of them. I've tested this guy and it happened to be number two. So I've marked two on there and two dots on the cable itself. So I'm just getting ready to test the next three. And for that, we have to go up and down the stairs a few times. All right, folks. So I'm talking a bit quietly because the kids have just gone to bed. 
Um, but don't worry, I'm not going to spend too long up here. We'll go downstairs and then I'll be able to talk relatively normally. Although, um, there is a direct kind of hole underneath their room into the cupboard under the stairs. So I'm not going to talk too loud tonight. But hopefully you guys can hear me okay and it's not too distracting. Um, every single feed works. I've labelled them all for one, two and three and they all work. So I've tested every line for continuity, um, all eight wires in all four cables working. So super chuffed about that. So I need some patch cables uh, for downstairs and I need to shove all of this cabling behind the rack. I'm gonna do a super quick job for now. We'll pull the rack out completely and make it all neat in the future. Um, I'm also going to move my power line adapter downstairs because there's no need to have it up here anymore. I can move it into the cupboard under the stairs. It's only temporary under there anyway. I can't change the lights in here to make any more light because, like an idiot, I've unplugged the Hue bridge. <laughs> but it'll be two shakes and it'll be plugged back in. So we have got um, three devices, essentially, that are now being added to this setup, which is going to make it live and that's super exciting uh, because right now it's just been a load of stuff that's hanging on the wall that means nothing. So here we have the Hue Bridge. This is moving from my office down into a much better location. Here we have the Airboard Extreme going on the outside and temporarily the power line adapter until we run that main gigabit feed from that patch to behind the TV which will hopefully be in this video. So what I'm gonna do is plug all this in, then show you guys everything I've done because there's not much to see visually different from the last time you saw this, but there's just a load of punching down and that, that all happens obviously at the back of the sockets, so you can't see it, but all the cables are going into the back boxes. So you'll notice that as a difference. So I'm gonna quickly plug, plug all this in. I'm not gonna tie any cables down. No cable is neat in there at the moment. I'm gonna leave it all until the very end, then dress everything back neatly. So we're gonna wait until the last day for that one. Okay, folks, so let's turn it on. Plug it in. Apologies for the camera work. Okay, and power are on. Wrong button, that button. Okay, green light. Yeah, now we're going. So power line is on and connected. This is temporary. Um, as you can see, the power line is connected to port number three. Port number three will eventually be going down into this port. That'll be the TV line, but this line is connected. Port number two is going to port number one on this socket. And that is the airport on the other side. I'll show you that in a second. And then we have port number four going to the Hue bridge, which is just booting up. So hopefully, yes, it's now active. Excellent. So the Hue bridge is just sitting there. And then we have port number one, which is dangling at the moment it'll eventually go into this guy, which will be the feed down there to the phone line. Sorry, this is so close, but hopefully you guys can get a good idea. There's all of the lines. As I said, I will tidy everything up very soon, but here it is for now, up and running, finally. So there's the Airport Extreme powered up, green light working. Super chuffed with that, and it's a really, really clean setup as well. Nice. That's looking good. And here's a view of the new networking work that we've done from like a normal height. So as you walk in, here's the top of the door. You guys can get an idea of how out of the way this sort of stuff is. So it's completely up underneath this turn of the, st of the stairs. So that there is the second story of the house. And check it out, battery backup, new supply. What was that red light then? That was something, I don't know what that was. Anyway, um, new socket, power line temporary. Soon that plug will just be plugged straight in. 
unless I want to keep power line fed around the house for something else, in which case that's a really good place for the power line adapter. But we'll come to that. Um, there's that. Everything will be tied back. I'll sort all this. All this, all these cables all will be sorted. But yes, that is brilliant progress. And apologies for the mess, folks. But let's just give the lights a go. Lights are working. Tremendous. So I think the next logical step is to finish everything off this end. Once it's done up here, all I have to worry about is downstairs. So I've only got one thing left to do. Well, there's more to do, but I think it makes more sense to focus on cable management when we make the video uh, focusing on the rack rebuild. So we will do that in the future. That'll be kind of way down the line when I reorganize the rack. That's not a priority for now. The priority for now is, of course, completing that work downstairs. So to finish this end off neatly, what I'm going to do is move some of this junk out the way, pull the rack out completely, hopefully, um, and then this little bit of cut down trunking that we cut for the outside of the door is very handily the correct length to finish off this drop of cable. So we've got one of these joins here and we'll just clip that on. We'll attach this to the wall and then everything will be pushed back neatly. I want to feed uh, line number one up to this router. So I'm gonna feed it into the rack and then back out again. Uh, so that it's available for the router. So when we make the changeover from this old cable that we ran uh, a good couple of years ago now when I first moved in, when we make the changeover from this cable to the new network drop, which is of course all neatly going that way, um, we can then completely disregard that cable, which is fantastic. So the router will be patched directly into the modem that will be downstairs. But anyway, for this part, we are just going to finish off a little bit of the trunking, uh, no major cable reorganization that will come in the future. There's no no point doing it now It involves taking everything out of the rack and that's not what we're prioritizing. So I've just shut down everything safely um, and We're gonna kill power to the rack. I did it up here. There was no need to do that I forgot about that handy button on the UPS Killed that. There was no need. Okay, so uh, I shut down the rack station I shut down the Mac mini and it is now safe to move the rack. I moved it ever so slightly yesterday with the disc spinning and I kind of didn't even think about that. I did it extremely slowly and I was worrying about that yesterday um, with four figures dumped into hard drives within this rack right now. It is super scary for me to mistreat it. So I only moved it about two inches outward and I don't even know if the discs are spinning. I wasn't, I wasn't personally seeking anything, whether it was doing anything, I've got no idea. Anyway, I'm uh, going to try not to think about that and we're just going to move the whole thing out. Uh, yeah, I'm going to need two hands. So that's about as far as we can stretch it. Uh, these cables are extremely tight. That's okay. Um, I'll just push this in a little bit actually, just to relieve a bit of that tension. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, so here's all of the cabling coming out the back of the rack. Not too bad at all. So that's the area that we're going to address. And for those of you who are wondering, that bundle down there is going to be coming away. That's the existing line running up to the modem from the phone socket. So can't wait to get rid of that. That's a lot of excess length that's impacting speed. So that's the little corner we're going to be focusing on right now. When I said it was the perfect length, it was just that tiny bit too short. And it is hammering down outside. My, sh my saw is in the shed at the top of the garden. And when I say hammering down, I mean hammering down. So check that out. Handy work with some wire cutters and a Stanley knife. Um, yeah, kind of killed the adhesive, but it doesn't matter because I've got screws to screw it in. Boom, there it is. That is pretty good. A bit of a bulge in the join, just because the trunking is so tight to the wall. Um, obviously, you don't have to use those. If you can cut them perfectly and match them together, you don't need to use them, but I am nowhere near good enough to do that. So I've got a few joins. One, two, three, four. But you know what? I'm more than happy with that. So I'm gonna push this rack back, uh, try not to jam any of the cabling, and then we'll power it back up and that'll be a clean look. All the network cables are in. So all of this will get managed in the future. It's no big deal for now. So there it is, the network cupboard, rack, whatever. 
is pushed back and all of the cables are just sitting back there. I can now push slightly further back because I don't have the power line adapter plugged in, which is a huge pro. And as you guys can see, all neatly going down the back. So beautiful. Let's power everything back up and get things up and running once again. So another little bit of time has passed and we're gonna do another stint on the network. In fact, this is gonna be pretty much the last big thing in this video, so nearly time to upload, can't wait. So I'm gonna dig out a good bit of cable here. I've unfortunately now left myself with some off cuts and things like that, so I need to be cautious of length. I don't wanna go running a cable and then run out of length. Um, but I assume because I've taped this together, then that's all one piece of cable. At least that's my assumption. So we'll go for that one. Uh, we're going to be running from the cupboard under the stairs down to the phone socket. So the plan has mostly stayed the same, but there has been a small development. We're sticking with the power over ethernet injectors, but the change is with this cable. I showed you guys this in the previous part. This is simply an RJ45 to RJ11 uh, cable, nice and thick, made up with Cat6. I bought this online specifically for the purpose. Um, but I don't need it anymore because the new plan is to not have any sockets, any connectors in the front of the phone socket. So instead, I'm going to use this small bit of Cat6 offcut. I'm going to pop an RJ11 on one end that will go into the modem. And on the other end, I'm simply going to trim everything down and just get my blue pair, which is the centre pair, on a cable like this. Uh, a bit of focus, maybe. Um, yeah, just get the blue pair and punch it down directly in the socket itself, eliminating the need to have any connectors coming out the front. You'll see what I mean when we go down. Um, basically, I had some slow broadband issues and OpenReach came out and as part of their um, thing, if they visit you, I think, when they want to roll out new phone sockets, they just install them in anybody's home they happen to visit, I believe, and it sort of gradually gets them rolled out. So I have the new, well, new-ish, I think they came out in 2016, uh, OpenReach Master Socket 5C and the Mark IV uh, VDSL faceplate. It's a fairly decent master socket. They've made a lot of changes this time around. It is toolless and whatnot. I'll show you guys in a minute, actually. Um, but yes, let's go and run some cable and see what we can do. So this is the state of the hallway, and the biggest change is the fact that I've stripped all the wallpaper off because we're redecorating. But the thing that concerns us at the moment is the lack of skirting board. Now you can see this line of sort of dust here. That is where the box skirting came to. So it's a big bulky box. We're not putting it back. We are going to uh, try and tidy this skirting up and just, yeah, my dad's gonna, he's gonna basically put a little bit of, I can't remember what you call it. Uh, if I remember in editing, I'll put it on the screen. Bit of wood anyway, that goes all the way along and just bridges the gap between this flooring and the um, the edge of the wall here. So what I'm getting at is we no longer have that wooden box that was built to go in front of this. So just like I've done here with the current internet line, uh, I'm gonna go directly into the phone socket and I'm gonna do the same with the phone. We do have a handheld house phone that goes up there on the wall where those two screw holes are. So I'll go straight in with that one as well and run a tiny, tiny bit of conduit up the wall once we've redecorated, so that should look really neat. But we'll have nothing plugged in here. We're gonna go straight in the bottom. Modem's gonna sit there. So this cable is gonna go along where this one is now, underneath where my dad's gonna do the work. So that's pretty cool. Um, moving on to the socket. The socket has been changed. The OpenReach engineer took away my socket uh, that I purchased on eBay and gave me this one. Couldn't really stop him, obviously, because you're not meant to tamper with the master socket beyond the point of telephone extensions and stuff like that. So this is the replacement. They began rolling out the master socket 5C in around 2016, I believe. And the major design differences are two big things. I'm not gonna show you now because the guys are using the internet connection. But the first thing is it's completely toolless to dismantle. So you can just literally pull it off. And yeah, it's pretty bonkers because 
You don't need a screwdriver, so it's a bit more convenient, but if you come over here with the hoover or the, the floor brush or you just happen to walk along it or kick it or whatever, it does fall off. So it's really inconvenient in that regard, especially considering how long a VDSL modem takes to reconnect. Um, and the second part is you no longer need a punch down tool to punch down your cables inside. Uh, I'll show you that in a minute. It's like a toolless little quick release thing. Really strange. I quite like it. Um, but yeah, there's nothing wrong with a good old fashioned tool. So new phone socket doesn't really affect us. We're not going to have anything plugged in the front by the time we're finished. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm just going to start clearing out the cupboard now to make space for me to be able to run this cable. So here we are right at the front of the cupboard under the stairs and that point over there where the torch is shining well actually as far in the corner as possible is where we're going to drill so i'm trying to decide right now whether i'm going to drill from this side or drill from that side there's kind of pros and cons yes it's really cramped in here but i can take the drill at an angle facing the wall so that means that when the cable comes um from the skirting I can hopefully hide it with the carpet and you will not see it at all. It'll just go straight in. Um, but then the other disadvantage is I don't really know... Well, the, yeah, that was the advantage, sorry. The disadvantage is it's cramped and I can't really tell where we are kind of thing. But I'll go and investigate. I'll move this uh, tin of paint and I'll go and investigate and see where we can drill. Okay, new development. It's gonna be really awkward from this side because I can't drill low enough to the floor. Uh, reason being is because this piece of laminate that's been flopped in here is like a leftover from when they did the extension because this is the flooring we have in the kitchen and the downstairs bathroom. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of movement in it because it's not actually flat. It's ramping upward towards the stairs. It's not actually sitting on the floor. Let me try and demonstrate. Oh, you can see it right there, look. Huge gap underneath. So we actually want to drill under where this laminate is sitting. Well, not technically. Technically, we want to drill in that tiny gap in between the laminate and the stairs, but we I don't think we'll get down there. So we have what looks to be success. We've got a little hole down there, as tight in as I could get it with the drill, and that's a good size, so... It'll just tuck around there and straight in, no messing. Push the carpet back, job done. You will not see it once all of this is sorted out. So let's go back in the cupboard and we'll feed through some cable, see if we can pull it through. Here it is, the cable, perfect. So I'm gonna pull through a generous amount of length. I'm gonna create a slack loop down in the corner there before I start tacking the cable along the stairs uh, and up inside towards the patch panel. That way I've got um, slack there if I need it to uh, you know, alter anything at the other end if I ever need any more length or whatever. So that's the plan at the moment. So here's our little bit of spare slack that can sit down in that corner. I'll go the other side, pull that through. And as far as I'm concerned, we can start tacking the cable back here and uh, then punch it into the socket. And we'll be able to pop an end on the end of the cable down there and give it a test. So there it is, tacked up. Not the neatest job in the world, but it's in the cupboard, so nobody can see it. Tucks behind there, comes out there, and goes in to the back box, of course. So we've got some nice slack that we can bundle up up there. I'm gonna do a nice little neat slack area and tie it all back and stuff as part of the finishing touches. Um, but we can now punch a faceplate onto the front of this cable. Uh, so I just need to go and find one. A nice single socket faceplate. So the faceplate is on folks. It's all punched down and hopefully ready to rock. Um, the slack is there for now until we dress it all back neatly up there. I've poked a lot of the slack for the upstairs lines back through under the floor, but we'll readdress all that anyway. Um, so now I'm going to go and tackle the other end and we can actually test this line once we get this cable cut to length and um, an RJ45 on the end. So this is the old feed that I've pulled out from the gap and I've crammed in this new feed and it goes all the way along, all the way along, all the way along, all the way along to a very handy little bit right at the very end in the corner here where the floor raises up ever so slightly. So the cable is kind of tucked under there and it comes underneath the incoming BT line. 
and now I'm just prepping to put an end on here and the plan is to put the modem here somewhere sort of there and then what I'm thinking is because there's going to be quite a lot of cable action this side by the way this is just an old telephone extension um, it used to come along here it actually comes out under the floor and goes through into the other room uh, that was, <laughs> believe it or not folks, just as a little side note, I'm not sure if I showed this in part one. Look at the gauge of this cable. Ancient, ancient. That was running the previous owner's router because it was, the router was running on that extension in there. So it was coming in on this line. There was no master socket. It was just terminating here in this block connector thing. And then there was a join. Oh yeah, this is what it was doing, sorry. It was coming in. Line was going in there, this guy was in there as well, running under the floor, through there, and into a telephone socket, and uh, God knows where else. So, yeah, needless to say, we've upgraded the network in this house ever so slightly. So, uh, back to this. I'm going to put an end on, and then we're going to pop the modem on the wall here, so we'll have some downtime from the web for a short while. Let's experience the moment of truth together. I've got the other end of the tester plugged in. Uh, under the stairs, Let's plug this end in, where is it, there it is, okay, let's go, we'll go rapid fire, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, job done folks, that is one successful ethernet run, most definitely successful, so this is pretty much permanently going to live inside of this obviously, because we're running the modem from this guy. That's the next step, getting the modem. I almost forgot one thing before um, doing the modem, and that is prepping the little cable to go from the phone socket to the modem. Looks a bit ugly, because I don't have a uh, uh, cable boot uh, end bit for any RJ11s, but Yes, indeed. I've done blue and orange, only needed blue, but I occupied all four pins because it's just easier to make the cable that way. I could have maybe cut them a bit shorter so that I could have crammed the sleeving into the end of the RJ11, but I don't think it would have really fit anyway. So that'll do for now. I can always redo it. Uh, we'll just test to see if it all works first. So what we're going to do is run a quick speed test on speedtest.net just to see where we stand with the current cabling setup. Bearing in mind this is the 25 meter run that we run in part one, and it's been running my internet connection for the last three years or so since I've lived here. We're hoping to get a bit of an increase. If I can get past 60 on the download there, that would be sweet. Connection doesn't perform quite as well as it did when we moved in. There'd be several contributing factors to that. Most notably, more people on the street opting to connect to VDSL or fibre to the cabinet. Um, so there we have it, 58.84 and 15.87. I'm going to screenshot that so I don't forget. And let's go to uh, dismantle the modem, the current modem setup, and move it downstairs. So this is the final time, hopefully, final time we will be using this massive cable. Let's kill all of this, kill that, kill this. There we have it, the modem, ready to be placed on the wall downstairs. Oh wow, you can mount it sideways. That's pretty neat, like that way. Oh, that might be fun actually. Yeah, we'll do that, it'll take up less space. Oh, but it's kind of neat having the connectors go to the bottom maybe. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it this way. If I want to box it in, then it's easier because I can just box it in the bottom half. So that's that. Uh, I'll fish out the power cable and then we'll do up a quick template to screw it on the wall, and we can plug it in, give it a go. So one change we need to make up here is we now need to plug the new router line into our router because for those of you who don't remember, we are now using this time capsule as our router. So we're going to go into the WAN port, like so, there we go, and we should be connected now. So, sorry for the dodgy filming folks, I can take this slot downstairs, 
um, I'll send power down that line through the power over ethernet injectors, PoE. Yeah. We've got the power supply for the modem plugged in in the cupboard under the stairs. We've got the PoE injector in place, plugged into power there, plugged into number one, which is of course linking up to the office. And then we've got it patched directly into that line we've just run. And let's see if we've got power at the other end. That makes me a very, very happy man. There you have it, powered up. And it's gonna go like that, really neatly behind the front door in nobody's way, lovely stuff. So what I'm quickly gonna do now is, oh, this is a good opportunity to show you guys the phone socket. So check this out, new uh, Master Socket 5C, completely toolless. I just grab the sides and pull the front off. So this is the Mark IV VDSL faceplate, but of course they do other faceplates. Now, uh, this, here are your telephone extensions. So your telephone extensions, uh, on the back end here, so that's really good. You don't need any kind of tools, you just flip that open, push the wires in, and flip it closed. Same goes for this one. This is the broadband line, the VDSL line. So as you can see, I've run out that one, but we're gonna be running, uh, where's it gone? What's that little cable I had? Here it is. We're gonna be running this one that I've just made. So yeah, you don't need to trim the ends of the cable or anything, you just push it in and push it down, completely toolless, pretty bonkers really. Uh, so we're gonna do a test run and see how far we get. By the way, the BT line is also toolless. If you unscrew the faceplate, the socket, and you just um, pull it off, it's coming through the back box as normal, and then it's toolless on the back. There's like a red thing that's equivalent to this, and uh, yeah, it's bright red and you just punch it in there and job done. So, yeah, I'm kind of nervous to see if this all works. It's so far so good, but let's see. So once you've got the wires in, you can just push that in the little gap underneath. There's another gap in there if you want any telephone extensions to come out. Uh, and then the whole thing, you just push it back on. I tend to give it a bit of a slam because it doesn't really fit the best. Um, and now we can plug in the phone line to the modem and see if we get any action. This is the moment of truth really. So I've done a quick reboot on the modem and now we just wait for it to connect. You know what that light means folks? We are connected. So just to give you guys an idea in case you've lost me somewhere along the way we've eliminated the 25 meter run and it's that exact length because I bought it in that exact length. 25 meter down to this. What's this? 0.3 0.2, something like that. Super short. So, let's go and do a speed test. Okay, here we go. We're gonna go again. Come on. Come on. What? The hell? You're kidding me, we've lost like 10 meg on the download. Let's do a refresh. Oh, thank God for that. Thank God for that. Okay, go on, tip over 60. Go on, go on. You can do it, you can do it. Oh man. Let's give it another go, let's give it another go, go on. Okay, so we're a tiny bit quicker, like one meg. Um, oh, 59.98. We were nearly there. We nearly hit 60 meg. What were we before? Let's have a look. Um, 58.84, so yeah, we've gained like one megabyte, which is kind of Ill in the realms of, um, ooh, we're higher on the upload as well, 16.07 versus 15.87, so it's all within the margin of error. So no mega obvious speed increase, but that's okay. The whole thing is much more convenient now anyway, the way it is. Um, 
Yeah, I was hoping for a little bit more. That's okay. We had a really good cable running up the stairs, to be fair. If we'd run all of that on, like, standard ISP gauge cable, like the really thin, flat little cable, um, then you'd notice a speed increase straight away by moving the router closer to the master socket. Really would. Especially if there was a couple of joints and stuff, or if it went through another couple of telephone sockets. Um, which it sometimes does, you know. Sometimes people in their homes loop the router through telephone extensions using the uh, third and fourth wire in a, a two-pair cable. Um, so yeah, over anything like that, you'd notice a huge speed boost. But it, this was a direct... Um, link between the master socket and the modem and it was cat 6 so nice beefy cable it's just different because um, you're eliminating that 25 meter run but then again I am happy I am happy Let's, I'm just running it again just to see yeah it's all within the margin of error unfortunately so that's okay so there's that on the wall as you guys can see job done i just need to get the hoover and hoover up all this dust i'll give this whole place a hoover once i've moved all my stuff uh, but before then what we'll do is we'll ditch the old cable and get rid of it completely as you can see at the top of the stairs i've even gaffer taped it on because uh, it was all the plastic uh, plastic clips had broken so it was really dangerous at the top of the stairs but the plan is now uh when we redo the hallway if we just get a nice bit of board just a nice little you know drop of wood here, just covering this lot. Uh, all of this was gonna live inside the box skirting, but obviously we're not having the box skirting anymore, which is a good thing. So uh, yeah, very happy. And this is secure, not going anywhere. Good stuff. So we're in the office and I've chopped the line that goes under the carpet, pulled out the rest of it. Um, I'll pull out this one sometime in the future because it's all tangled up in the back of the rack. So, yeah, it's not in anybody's way there at all. Um, you may be thinking I could have left it there as a backup for now, just until I run the new system in. Well, the thing is, it was so dodgy at the top of the stairs there that it was just easier all round to yank it out. Um, I can always make a temporary cable. Massive success with this little session. Um, I'm now going to go with the family and watch the new How to Train Your Dragon. So, yeah. Um, we'll resume Network Part 6 with the finishing touches really soon um, and then I can get it edited and out to you guys. Awesome. It is Saturday night and I am hoping to completely finish Network Part 6 tonight. But I do have a little bit of an announcement to make. Um, but before then, I'm really hoping that I can be as productive as possible this evening. It is already 25 to 8, so not tons of time, but hopefully enough you know, a couple of good solid hours to get this done and tidied up and just seal the deal, really. You may be wondering about something I haven't mentioned in quite some time, and that is the Ethernet run from the patch panel to the TV. It's a very short distance, but incredibly frustrating. So we're still running on power line, of course. There is the power line adapter. Temporary patch cable going from that power line to the eight port switch underneath the TV setup. If you guys haven't seen the incorporation of that switch, check out the recent TV setup video. I'll explain everything in that. But of course the idea is to have a much shorter patch cable going from that eight port switch to a socket on the wall. Nice and clean, nice and tidy. But I'm gonna make the announcement today, even though we are gonna put the cable in ready, we're gonna punch it down in the socket ready, and we're gonna prep it as much as we can at this end so that we can cable manage. Unfortunately, I have to announce that we are not going to be running all the way to the TV and terminating in this video. Please don't shout at me. Um, a comment hit me quite hard in one of the previous network videos and it was, Tom, everything you do is half-assed and you never finish anything. And, the reason it hit me so hard is because it's true. It is true. But I kind of had a choice here. The choice was, do I wait until I can run the cable behind the TV and upload the video three, four, five, six, seven weeks down the line from now? Or do I edit up everything else, include everything else that I was gonna do, everything we've already done, and release the video to you guys and then just include the TV run at the part at, at the beginning of part seven, which will be, you know, months down the line, but at least you'll see it at some point. 
um, and I made the decision to not run the TV line in this cable in this cable God, I'm tired. You're going to have to excuse me, folks. I'm a little tired. I'm going to not run the TV line in this part of the video because I want to get this video out because it's already very delayed. So why is that? I was chatting to my dad last time he was here about the best way to run the cable behind the TV because if I'm being totally honest with you guys, I am pretty stumped. Um, we've got... This is basically a division. There was originally a door here. There was a door there and this is the old wall that was separating these two rooms. So this was the front room, this was the back room. Of course, the extension is new. That was the exterior wall. I assume there was a, a window there originally outside. Um, anyway, what I can't seem to get my head around is how to get around this kind of archway. That's not an archway. I don't know what you call it, but anyway. Um, I know how to run down because it'll follow the same line as the cable that we've already run. I can run downstairs, and even coming out is really easy. If I want to get the cable into this room, I can just drill through this wall under the, underneath this skirting and pull the cable out. But then I'm kind of stumped. Up until this point, I'm stumped. I've got the cable here, I just don't know what to do. So the kind of nasty thing would be to pin it all the way around the door. But as you can see, check this out. We've got a bit of door frame and architrave. I think this is called architrave. My dad's a carpenter. I should really know what this stuff is called. Um, check this out. It disappears. It completely disappears into the wall and just merges. Um, that's one thing about this place. The bodge jobs that are, that are everywhere are completely horrible. It really is horrible. Look at this, for instance, just merges away. So if I was to clip a cable round here, clipping all round here would be pretty fine. You could actually get it quite subtle. You could make the turns, you could get it going round, but then you get to this point and I'm like, okay, where do I go from there? So I must lip over and go down. Okay, cool. But then, we're here, and the only place I can really go is pin it around the skirting. Kind of a nightmare, because it won't last two minutes with the kids. They'll grab it and they'll pull it off. So then I came up with plan B, which is actually quite feasible. We've got some horribly placed laminate flooring here. Nice flooring, horribly laid. Um, let me show you guys, actually. The kids are asleep, so I'll have to close this pretty quick. But that is the state of the flooring on the, the door side. Uh, God. So there is actually a gap under this entire piece. So I could push a cable all the way under, along, 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 and actually poke out under here. Now the beauty is this floor is laid so badly that I think if I was to yank this skirting off, there would be enough of a gap around the flooring that I could just kind of get the cable underneath this skirting board and completely round. And then we'd be over here and then this is the home stretch. We'd be, we'd be absolutely fine. There should be enough of a gap to do that. But frustratingly, out of all the skirting that's fallen off in the house, check this side, check it out. All fallen off, right? But this side is going nowhere. It's really secure. So then, we had another idea. My dad, at some point, is gonna redo all of this for me. And he said that if I wanted, he, I could run my cable behind the work that he's gonna do. So then the cable would be hidden here around the door frame. Um, so there are a lot of options. We can work around it, or at least with his help, I can work around it to find the best way to run a single cable behind the TV. I may also look at other options, such as running it out to the hallway where we've run the other cable, and then try and get it um, through this side by drilling through the wall here. But I think it'll make more sense to do it this way. Anyway, this has been over a seven minute clip since I started chatting to you guys. So I just wanted to explain to you the process, the thought process behind the TV run and explain that I've managed to work out every other cable run that I've done in this these last two parts of the video, but that is one cable run that 
I can't work out at the moment, at least not quick enough to get this video out to you guys. So what are we gonna do now? Here's the cable that is eventually gonna run behind the TV. So we'll punch that into the socket. That is not a problem at all. We will then be able to dress all of the cabling back neatly and tidy it all up. Well, as best of my abilities, it doesn't have to be amazing because it's not in sight. So to help me with that, I've got a few things. I've got a couple of sizes, a couple of sizes of cable clips. I've got some general cable management stuff, but most importantly, these things, these are incredibly useful. They're little anchors, you can screw into them and you can cable tie, I've shown these in other videos. Absolutely love them. Got little zippers there, some more here, some bigger ones, some screws, some screws and plugs, punch down tool, various tools, spare batteries, one of which I need to use already, drill, hammer, and just, yeah, everything we could possibly want. So let's get up on the ladder and see where we stand. So here it is at the moment and this unused port here and this spare hole is the TV run. So that's the Wi-Fi, that's the TV. The idea is to follow this line up and of course join the socket, but leaving some slack just like I've done there, just like I've done everywhere to make things easier. So what I'm going to do now is take that socket off, that faceplate. I've got the cable here and I'm going to punch it down and then we're going to reattach it and then at least every punch down will be complete. I am such a drip. I originally thought that I brought everything up the ladder that I needed and I forgot a cable tie. So, okay, no worries. And I was like, I won't take these snips down just yet because I will need to cut the cable tie. But I did put my screwdriver back down on the floor over there and I now need to put this faceplate back on. So I need to get down off the ladder once again to get the screwdriver. Massive pain in the ass because there is no room to get on and off. So guys, I have swapped the patch cable between port 2 and the Wi-Fi for a shorter one. Fits perfectly. Um, I've still got the long cable patching between... Actually, a short cable might reach. No, it won't. Okay, I've still got the long cable from 3 to the power line, but as soon as I'm ready to swap into this port, I can take another short one and use that one so that the only long one remaining will be the one that goes to the Hue Bridge because it needs a bit more length. Um, then what I've done is because the... Uh, PoE injector was hanging out of port 1 and just sort of dangling. I've got one of my little Keystone RJ45 to RJ45s. I've used two short patch cables, one there and one there. Sorry about this filming folks, it's, the proximity is crazy. And I'm going to tie this on the board here really neatly and tie this one here so that the whole thing will be laid out nicely and you can see everything and patch in and out of it rather than there being like a floating mess of cable in front of the board. So I'm going to get to that now. I'm basically just going to use cable ties and those little anchors. There we have it guys, the completed PoE injector um, board placement, I guess you could say. So that is really neat and tidy. Very pleased. Uh, the next step for me now is to secure this bit of wood in the wall so that I can anchor to it and make everything neat down the bottom end here. And then we'll just kind of work our way along over to the power and then finish off finish off, sorry, up there. See what we can do up in that neck of the woods. Time is really ticking. I forgot how long it takes when you're crammed in here. I have made great progress. This is now secure, very secure. It's not going anywhere. And as you can see, I've neatly tacked those two runs back there. Looks like I'm gonna coil the slack in this little gap here and I can just attach it to the stairs so that'll work really well. Um, yeah, got to knock that one in. I've forgotten my hammer down there. And neatness up the top. I bundled together a load of slack, tied it together and pushed it back underneath. So, yes, this is about it for tonight, I think, because I am absolutely knackered and boiling hot. Um, doesn't look like much, but it is significant progress. So, yeah, we'll resume tomorrow night. And hopefully tomorrow night will be the final night. We can get this done. Come on. <laughs>
I've just done my final session in the cupboard for Network Part 6. I'll show you guys everything that I've done. This is the final clip. We are done. So both cables are running down the side of the stairs. I've got the TV line just at the bottom there, all the slack, ready to go out to the TV in Part 7. Uh, so they come up here. The slack for the WAN line is actually up here now. So there's some slack down the bottom, down the bottom corner, and there's some slack here. So plenty of slack on that line. Hoping with the TV that we can do some slack down the bottom corner there, just in case it's ever needed. Uh, trying to make this, you know, a really flexible setup. So both, both lines come in nice and neat. Uh, and this is the completed board. So yeah, completed everything. Um, one thing to point out is of course, from port number three here, this line that's running to the power line, I do have another one of these shorter purple cables. So when we do the TV run, that port number three will just be bridged over to this second port here, just like port number two is doing. So that'll look quite a bit neater. I'll also find a cable that is in between the length of this and this. This doesn't quite reach, this is too long to get to the uh, Hue Bridge from port number four. So other than that, that panel is done. You can see I've got the power cables all neatly tacked along. Uh, it may not look like I've knocked these all the way in, that's because I haven't, but they're extremely long, so they're very sturdy and, uh, you know, really, really tough hammering in such a tight space, actually. Um, it's not really, I'm not really used to it. So um, I'm not used to hammering things in general, let alone tiny, tiny little things in a tight space. So yeah, say what you will about all those sentences I just said, but you know. <laughs> um, we've got the uh, UPS here and all of the power cabling coming down from that quite neatly. That's just tacked along. And then any spare slack that we had for anything is bundled there. Now, it's not the neatest thing in the world. Um, when we get the power line adapter out of the way, what I will do probably is maybe put another piece of wood going up just to tack those things too, uh, just to make that neat. Because at the moment they're just floating. So basically we've got spare power cable there from the modem, spare ethernet cable there that's running to the access point. So yeah, that does look a bit messy. Um, we've just kind of got a corner of all sorts here in between, but for the most part, I am very, very pleased. So let's try and get everything in one frame. It's a bit compact in here. There you go, look at that. That is looking very nice. I'm really proud of what we've managed to achieve. Um, for my first project of this nature, I'm chuffed to bits. So I just wanna thank everyone for their patience. There have been one or two people that have been slightly unfair and commenting on every video, um, commenting, we just want Network Part 6 on every single upload. You know, I got it out as quick as I could. Really sorry for the delay, but I don't want to be a downer at the end of the video. Um, part 7 is months and months and months and months down the line, maybe even a year down the line. I am not desperate to do Part 7 at all, because what will happen, of course, I will do this TV line and I'll record it and then it'll be months that go by before we actually reorganize the rack and stuff upstairs. So part seven will be filmed months down the line and sort of with months in between each clip, if that makes any sense, because we'll be eliminating this power line adapter before we film the rest of part seven. So that'll be included in part seven. But yes, there we have it, folks. We are done. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you so much for watching. It's been great fun. See you in part seven.